What's going on guys and welcome back to another uh, Tech Tip Tuesday as we're calling them with Bruce Senior from Southside Players. So as we kind of touched on at the end of last season when me and Bruce decided to team up for this year, um, what we really want to get across to you guys is the season is short. It's super short. It continues to get shorter and shorter, right? Yeah. I mean, it, at least that's what it feels like. If you're not there when the snow hits or your stuff isn't ready when the snow hits, then it's pretty much like you're too late. So what we want to talk about in this video is basic setup for you and your sled. Uh, so we're going to kind of go through the suspension, kind of explain what does what, um, and give you guys, again, just a basic breakdown of what each thing does and kind of how it can help you get your sled set up so you enjoy it as much as you possibly can in the limited season that we have. So right here we have a 2021 XC850. So these shocks are not, or what is not what's coming on the 2022 XC is this year, but last year, this is what coming on. This is what'll come on your VR1. Um, and then your XCR shocks will be what it is on that sled. So we're going to kind of bounce between the two sleds and explain everything of what's going on. So I'm going to let Bruce take over here and it will kind of give you guys a rundown of what's what and what does what and how you could change it. Okay. Here we're going. Uh, what we got is... The, the main thing is to get the snowmobile so that it's set up for your weight because the, the weight of the rider is what has a lot of control over the snowmobile, whether it be traction or steering when you're on braking or on the gas. So uh, like Jesse was saying, the, you know, the walker shocks, which are on this, there's plenty of snowmobiles out there from last year that have this shock. And we're going to be talking about the movement of the spring and and picking the front of the track off the ground a little bit and that holds true with every sh any shock that's on it. it doesn't really matter so you got this stuff which is the xc and then you got obviously tons of vr1 out there which was the blue anodized shock like the xcr velocity so the can was halfway down the shock but still single knob like that's on that right there this year's 22 xc for the for the amount of those are going to be out there are going to have the fox one two three clicker and so it's just uh a much simple you're not counting clicks it's all you're doing is literally going from number one yeah and they're, they're if they've been following they're familiar with the front shocks on my current right. sled yeah yeah it's a uh, on the consumer xc is going to be a half inch rod shock like this is on this xc compared to vr1 is a 5 8 rod and so is xcr uh, your sled with your Fox are 5 8 rod 2.0, so the shock was a larger diameter Correct, and yeah. 5 8 rod. So all that stuff attributes to how the shock feels. And But the 1, 2, 3 was always, you know, like the zero. The 1 was what it is, the number 2 was 20%, and number 3 was 80%. So mm -hmm. there was a lot of change in that shock in mm -hmm. three clicks. Yeah. So when you go to, you know, ride this sled, first thing first is the springs that are on the the torsion springs that are on these sleds that hold the snowmobile up. So which which this are? Is, this is the shock, the spring that's right here. Okay, there's a short leg right here, which is adjusted by, uh, this one's on high right now. So high, medium, low, and you turn it with a spark plug size wrench. So that, and this spring that's on this is the same spring that's, that comes on a VR1 last year and this year, and an XCR this year, which there's tons of XCRs being built. The only one that does have a different spring is the previous video when we talked about the uh, purpose-built cross-country sled that does have the heavier springs in it already. But consumer-wise, what we're talking about, XC, VR1, XCR, torsion springs identical. It's just a matter of the shock valving changes on an XCR to a stiffer valving and the high-low speed shocks. So when the first thing is, is how this sled is going to hold you up. So if... If a guy is, like I'm 175 pounds and I go to heavy springs. So not extra heavies, I go to heavy springs. So, because this spring is not enough for me to go through the trails. Um, no matter what I'm doing with the clicker, it's gonna go through, I'm gonna bottom out. And then I'm also, when I'm trying to power through the turns and when you wanna gas through the corner, the tail is gonna squat. And when it squats, it puts more track on the ground and then wants to make the front drift. So that's what we don't want. 
So the first thing that's gonna save that from happening is the spring that holds the sled up for the proper weight. Okay. And if I'm 175 pounds and I'm a relatively aggressive rider just because I like to see what the snowmobile is gonna do, I need heavy duty springs and usually I'm on um, either low or medium, mm -hmm. or I might be low and medium because you can definitely change uh, from one side to the other. You can have one side low, one side medium. It's not a problem. And that kind of splits the difference if you're if one's a little bit too rigid for you and the other one's a little bit too soft for you, if you feel yourself bottom when you're going into G out hole or whatever. But the spring is, they make um, those two options for these units and it covers a lot of bases for a lot of weight. So that's first thing. Next thing is, is shock clickers. You know, the more you go clockwise, like we talked about before, we have it here. It's, it's no different than, than on a, on a ski shock. When you go all the way out, it's, it's soft. When you start turning clockwise in, it is going to be stiffer. And how many clicks total are there on these? On, I think, these, I believe there's 12. Yeah. On these shocks, I think there's 12. And unfortunately they don't make a lot of difference till you get close to the bottom and that's because these shocks are needle shocks mm -hmm. we've talked about that before um definitely should have a, a shock rod and stuff and i can actually show you what it's doing mm -hmm. um but what which we'll do in another video i'm gonna have bruce get into a shock when he revals my fronts my fox fronts and show you guys what is actually going on in there and and, and yeah and then I'll, I'll have a walker apart with a needle and then you can actually see what the difference is between a shock that isn't a needle shock, like in an XCR, or and fronts on these mm -hmm. and centers. But the rear shocks in all the snowmobiles are needle, except for the race snowcross sled and the race cross country sled. Right. Other than that, this needle, what it does is it makes the first movement of the sled very easy. And the idea behind that is you're going through and the and the trails are packed and or they're uh, edgy so you're catching those little edges and you don't want to feel all that chatter in you the needle takes that because it, it's a bypass hole so the oil flows very quickly through it back and forth and so you don't feel all that movement we were they were doing the same thing back when we were with the pro s rears with the rushes and switchbacks and it worked very well it's just a matter of it it is on the soft side so when you're gassing through a corner it wants to squat again puts more track on the ground, makes it drift. Mm -hmm. So plenty of times we take the needle out of that shock and we plug things and I can show you that stuff on another video where, and then the, the back won't squat so quickly on the gas, keeps the skis on the ground, makes it go around a corner mm -hmm. because that's what, it's, you know, that's what it's all about. You don't want to bottom out and you want to be able to turn. So, and so besides the springs and holding the sled up and um, to, to your weight, the next thing is what you have on the skis, uh, because no matter no matter how how you work this, if you don't have car good carbides under it or a you know this a rudder, it's not going to turn. So you go you know the the stock sleds come with the round bar, round Woody's bar, four inch, which works fine, wears well. It's just and it works well for most people. If you're an aggressive rider or you just want more steering. Uh, that Woody's makes an ace carbide, which this is a rectangular, so truly like a rudder. And this comes in either six or eight inch. This one happens to be an eight. Um, so more wear, and <clears throat> more wear ability. But that rudder is what is going to make it steer. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, no matter what you do to everything else, if you don't have good steering underneath the ski, you're fighting a losing battle. Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing that they offer, that Woody's offers, is a Slim Jim, which is a dual runner, so really good wear factor, and it's for anti-darting. So, it, because this won't fall into the groove that's in the trail and, and dart the sled. So, this was their uh, remedy Answer to for that, that yeah. and it does work mm -hmm. really well. They do also make now a navigator, which I should have over here, and I don't, that uh, goes into the front of the ski, and it's like a big flat pan in front of the carbide so it's made to when you're going down the trail that is is flattening the the snow the that snow the... out so you're making your own track mm -hmm. so that's the idea behind it the because because you know, with the things that we're talking about here with putting spring in keeping the sled up more 
um, or not, should I say, not compressed too much because when it's compressed too much, it is taking weight off the skis. Well, a snowmobile won't dart with, with no weight on the skis. Mm -hmm. It'll go down the trail nice and straight, just ain't gonna turn. Mm -hmm. So um, so when you start setting things up to get them to, that, to I'm gonna get to that corner and I'm gonna turn just the way I want, you are setting yourselves up for, in the right snow conditions, it's gonna dart. Um, so it's it's kind of a like yeah, catch twenty two, but yeah, it's you know you in the right snow conditions going to dart. Last year in the east here, our snow was awesome. We had very little darty snow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was really good, but obviously snow conditions change very quickly, and you can run into right. very darty snow. So the springs, <clears throat> carbides, those are <clears throat> the first things to make it. So I'm going to get it to turn, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The next thing is, is um, you know, again, how much track is on the ground, and because if there's too much track on the ground, just like we talked about in a previous one with the race sled, how there's very little track on the ground, that's what makes it turn. Less track on the ground, the skis want to turn. Um, so that's affected by a couple of things. One is you want to know if you're going to stud, because if you're going to stud, you know, we usually we stud about seventy-five percent of the of the snowmobiles that we sell it, it, it's um it's not only good traction but it's good stopping mm -hmm. it's very it's safe. just a it's a safety thing if anything safe. you know some people say well i'm not a racer i don't need studs well you don't have to be a racer to put studs on no you want to be able to stop when you're supposed to you want to be able to go up that hill that's icy without coming down it backwards mm -hmm. so it's very very important and then you can use you know single plates or double diggers yeah. which are been very common with woodies and so with traction comes again you're affecting steering because the more traction you have the less steering ability you're going to have so it's it's a matter of okay i'm putting i'm putting 96 studs on this 137 and i'm going to put really good carbides on because now i've got so much bite i need to have bite in the front and that's what you got to do so the next thing is, and the simplest thing to do is, uh, if you just adjust, you can adjust your springs in the front here. You can loosen these collars and you can thread this, just thread it down and you have a, a fair amount of threads left. On an XCR, not so many, but you don't need a lot on an XCR anyway. And you thread this down a quarter or three eighths of an inch and it picks the nose of that sled up. So when it picks the nose of the sled up, it takes the track off the ground and it's ever so slightly but it all makes a difference because mm -hmm. you're you're suspending the snowmobile. You're trying to suspend it from three points, but unless it's a race sled, which these are so stiff, you can't really do that. So if you like, well, I'm gonna get a lot of steering and I'm gonna crank the spring way down. Oh well, no, now you're gonna pick the nose up too high, you're gonna put too much weight on the tail, and that whale's weight is combined with your weight, and now it's gonna mess it up. So it's, it's literally small adjustments make a big difference, mm -hmm. especially when Okay, I've got the right springs. I got the right carbides. I'm going to thread this down a uh, quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, and, we're, and then I'm going to go try it tonight and take it for a rip. And and that's what you and that's what you're, you're going to feel. Those small adjustments. It's going to plant those skis, and it's going to want to turn. Um, with these snowmobiles, well, all XCs, VR1s, XCRs, no needle shocks. So again, we'll talk about what that means after, but the old, the old uh, Pro S stuff used to be very, a lot of movement in this, in this front end. You could, you could dive at one side or the other. So when you went into that turn, the, the front end wanted to lean. So if this front end is leaning very easily, it's not putting weight on that carbide. It's compressing. So it can't put weight on the carbide in, unless this is more solid. The more solid this is, you go around a corner, that weight puts right on that carbide, outside carbide, and it's gonna wanna turn. So that's another reason why we're going down, you know, go down that quarter or three eighths because you're you're just a little bit more preload on that spring. Mm -hmm. It just won't dive quite as much. And again, these are not needle shocks, and so they won't move as easy, and it'll wanna turn. So it's, um, so that's, you know, two different reasons as far as, doing the spring and making it a little bit more solid, but you're also picking up the track off mm -hmm. the ground. So those things, springs, adjusting springs, good, good carbides, 
you're on your way to now you can try this thing out and, and see how it goes. The, the other way that people did it for years was adjusting the strap and the rear suspension. Um, I'm sure um, when you had your suspension out, mm-hmm. you yep. see the strap, strap or straps, because again, it could be one strap on XC's compared to X, uh, XCR's. Mm-hmm. Oh, two. two straps, right. Uh, so small adjustments again. Um, you, you actually can take the bolts out, drill another hole, and grab a half inch more a strap. Again, wants to pull that track off the ground. I didn't have to do that at all with this Matrix chassis. Not at all. It was all about just picking the nose up with the spring, having the right springs in the rear, and those things turned. Mm-hmm. It was the best I've ever seen. So now what if what if a guy did all the, the check marks that he went through and he just thinks it's still too soft? So then, we, then you could get in the clicker, you know, clickers yeah, and stuff like that. Definitely want to. Um, you got twelve clicks on these, and and get things rigid up a little bit. Front ones, when you turn those in, it does. It makes that front a little firmer, so it doesn't want to dive because mm-hmm. you are sort of like a sports car. You go around the corner of a sports car, you don't see the car lean. Mm-hmm. Go around the corner on a sedan, you see the car lean. Well, obviously, it doesn't handle as good. So same thing. You keep that from leaning. And which we which we were working on, you do it with clicker a little bit more. It helps a lot. Mm-hmm. XCR with the low and high speed adjustment we talked about with the center knob, you can you can rigid it up just with that center knob. Yeah. So let's let's go over to here and then explain kind of what you have going on there. So this outside knob, red high speed. So fast movements of the shock, lots of movement of the shock. Again, big bumps. You're when you're all the way out here. Your counterclockwise, you're softer. The more you go in clockwise, the stiffer you get. This, that's high speed for again a lot of movement, fast movement. This here is the slow movement of the shock, the leaning, coming into a corner, flat corner. You go around a corner and the sled's leaning. You turn this in, and though that will slow that shock down considerably from that happening. The thing that you have is if it, if the snow is rigid edgy snow you know just sometimes that stuff is icy and you're catching edges if this is turned in too much you feel a lot of it in your wrist and the handlebar Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not very comfortable so you got that's where you don't want that uh because it just it's just not comfortable at all you know and it feels like it wants to rip the bars out of your hands Mm -hmm. so you're with the xcr you have that option turn that low speed out and free that up Mm -hmm. now would you suggest everyone starting their clicks kind of in the middle um, and going from there, or would you say, you know, mostly, towards the softer side? Yeah, towards the softer side and work your way up. You know, I tell people all the time when they're, you know, that's where you start. But if you're on a um, weekend ride, you're going somewhere, trails are awesome, whatever you got, maybe six inch, one foot chop. So you're going through and that hammering through that stuff. You can make big changes. You know, stop, turn your, turn your ski shock clickers all the way in. High speed only, not low speed. Go down it turn them halfway back out, come back up it, or if the trail is staying the same. So you can see what that shock is doing through that kind of bump. So it kind of gives you your own tutorial on, yeah, I like that or I don't like right. that. Right, some knowledge for yourself. Yeah, and same thing with low speed too. And Because I did that first time they put those on, and because I, I have a really good, probably a mile run behind my house. It's twisty and it's thrash because everybody has to use that trail. And um, I went and made those changes, and boy, it's... Mm -hmm. yeah so really basics is is getting it set up you know from the start you know set up from the start to your weight right how you ride because there's plenty of people out there that don't ride like that those rear springs are going to be fine they're not going around the corner on the gas they're they see the corner coming they're lighting off and they're coasting through the corner this thing is going to go around the corner like a dream you know just the way it is just a matter then is if you put studs on it because you want control and you maybe then you should put six inch carbides on because you're putting that traction in the back but at that speed you won't have to make any other adjustments at all other than if it uh the holes get deep and you want to turn a clicker in Mm -hmm. but as far as all these other little fine adjustments um at normal trail riding this snowmobile or a vr1 or xcr are going to be awesome Mm -hmm. it's when it's just like anything else doesn't matter if it's a car or this, if you start pushing it, now you start to notice, right. hey, this isn't quite the way I want. Mm-hmm. 
and you know so I don't want to get mixed up that oh I got to make all these adjustments just because I want to go riding there's plenty of people you come upon on a, on a weekend and riding and they're enjoying themselves doing 25 miles an hour these will turn all day like on a dime right it's a matter of what you're pushing it to do yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little note at the bottom you know aggressive rider mm-hmm. yeah setup wise yeah. But yeah, guys, I mean, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's it's basic stuff, you know, basic uh, pointers off the bat that will get you going, and then you can fine-tune it as you go on and as you learn more, you know, about your sled and about how you like it to handle and everything like that. Um, but that, you know, if, again, if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments. You know, I will get back to them. If I can't answer them, me or Bruce will get back to you. Or I'll get with Bruce, and he'll get, you know, I'll, I'll answer you either way. But um, that's it. You know, the sleds are awesome, but if you're, you know, riding aggressive like I do and like Bruce does, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, put in the time to learn them and, and get them set up the way you want them to. But uh, I hope that gives you guys a little bit of insight onto, you know, a, at least a, a direction of where to go. So again, if you have questions, you could call Bruce, you know, ask for him, you know, call Southside, ask for him. You could drop a comment. You could send me a message on Instagram, whatever, you know, you guys need. So uh, that's going to do it for this video unless you got anything else. Yep. So uh, make sure to like, make sure make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.